welcome back to the latest lecture session. So we have been discussing aqueous complexes and I believe we are going to look at a couple of examples today. Uh, one uh, where we are going to set up the equations manually and based on that we are going to look at the applications in uh, Vmintech I guess, right. Uh, so here we are going to uh, uh, wrap up uh, the aqueous complex based uh, relevant uh, uh, sessions. But this hopefully this particular session should uh, help you understand uh, or get a holistic view of what it is we are trying to uh, talk about or discuss about in relation to the aqueous complexes. So here I have an example, right. So here we are going to first set something up manually, right, uh, because you need to understand how it is going to be relevant to the second question which we are going to look at in Vmintech, right. So here we are going to uh, develop a set of equations, right, so that you can determine the equilibrium species concentration, right. And what is the, what do the, what does the solution contain? It contains mercury, right, and sulphide, right, uh, toxic heavy metal, right, and sulphide, again a ligand, right. So this is the electron poor compound and the electron rich compound here. So but here uh, one aspect would be that uh, there are multiple or remarkably number of, uh, what do we say, feasible uh, complexes with respect to HgOH, uh, you know, Hg and OH or Hg and S, right. But here I guess you know we uh, cut down on all the relevant complexes but they are only going to look at those complexes which are going to be at relatively higher concentrations. So those higher concentrations I guess uh, are those complexes which are going to be at higher concentrations are going to be HgOH plus. So two forms of HgOH complexes and three forms of Hg and S complexes, right. So again we need to develop equations such that we need to solve for these particular species, species as in their equilibrium concentrations, right. So here obviously I guess uh, you know we have some other uh, what is relevant right up here. But the key is that in general let us say from our background what would you usually choose as your components now. What is the approach here? You list the species, so the species are already given uh, based on the relevant or prior experience I guess, right. And then we are going to list the components. But in general based on our particular what do we say? Uh, uh, background thus far, what would we usually choose? We would choose the metal which would be Hg2 plus and then the uh, uh, what is a ligand S2 minus and H plus, right. But you know that can lead to what do we say complexities in solving this particular solution, right. And so here let us say we can look at let us say the uh, usual uh, what do we say uh, uh, components that Vmintech uses, right. So once we look at that, let us say it can aid us in choosing the components for solving by hand too. So you can choose those components Hg2 plus S minus S2 minus or S with the negative charge of minus 2 and also the H plus, right. But it can take longer to arrive at your particular solution. So obviously we can look at what are the components that uh, Vmintech chooses and looks like uh, Vmintech chooses Hs minus or has Hs minus and HgOH twice as uh, its components. So let us just check that I guess, right. So we are going to look at do we have Hs minus here, Hs minus so there we have that right and let us check if we also have S minus 2. We do have S minus 2 but for this particular case it makes more sense to choose Hs minus and where do we have the HgOH twice here. So we have Hs minus and HgOH twice here. So we are going to choose these as the components because in general that will lead to let us say uh, easier uh, uh, solution let us say or you know uh, uh, faster uh, you know calculation let us say. So we are going to move on. So again here we are going to choose Hs minus and HgOH uh, twice as the components, right. And again another aspect is uh, the question says S2 minus can be ignored because pKa is so high, right, you know that it will not be present at most pH. H S2 minus as in we know that H2S and the acid base right Hs minus and S2 minus let us say. So this will obviously from your acid base background too you know that this will be present only at uh, what do we say pH greater than the uh, pKa right. But we are saying that the question says that the pKa is so high that in general you can neglect S2 minus as a species right. So with this set of information let us go through. First let us write down these particular uh, what do we say species and they are uh, HgOH plus right and HgOH twice and what else HgOH plus HgOH twice HgHs twice HgHs2 okay 
H G H S twice H G H S 2 minus H G S 2 2 minus right is that what we have right that is what we have. So, and what are the other uh, what do we say species obviously that you need to choose. So, again the key is that this mentions that assume that the important complexes these are only the important complexes right obviously you need to choose the relevant uh, conjugate acid base species and the other what do we say forms of your particular uh, metal too right not forms of metal the metal. So, you are going to have HG 2 plus you are also going to have uh, S 2 minus, but the question says you can uh, neglect uh, S 2 minus right. So, this is something I am going to neglect right and the other 5 species are mentioned because these are the only predominant species there are many other species feasible or that will occur in uh, or you know you would come across in the solution. But these are the uh, species that we are considering because they would be present at relatively higher concentrations and then obviously the conjugate acid base H 2 S and H S minus right. So, these are the relevant uh, species and what are the components here again the question mentioned that or you know uh, using Vimintec we can choose the relevant components and I believe that asked us to choose H 2 S is it uh, H S minus I guess choose H S minus and H G O H twice as our components H G O H twice and H S minus as our components and why is that again because Vimintec chooses these as uh, components right H S minus and H G O H twice. So, because let us say we are going to uh, look at the in the second question using Vimintec to be able to solve for this particular solution. So, it obviously again makes more sense to set up uh, what do we say the total component concentrations in those components which you can obviously you know uh, translate to in Vimintec right. So, H S minus and H G O H twice are my uh, what is it now the components here. So, these are the components and these are the species. So, let us go with the formation equations for the non component species formation equations for non component non component species right. So, first let me la uh, list those species right. Uh, which are non component yes. So, uh, they are going to be OH minus let us say H 2 s H G O H plus H G H s twice right H G H s 2 minus and H G s 2 mi 2 minus right. So, these are the non component species. So, how can I form them? So, here obviously it is H 2 O minus H plus will lead to formation of uh, the O H minus. So, now here I am trying to form H 2 S right, but my component here is H S minus. So, how do I manipulate H S minus to arrive at H 2 S? So, I can then add obviously I need to have H plus as my component it is always a component right H plus is always a component H plus H S minus plus H plus will lead to my H 2 S right. So, I am done with that and here I am now with H G O H, but the relevant uh, component that I have is H G O H twice. So, how do I manipulate H G O H twice to be able to arrive at H G O H. So, if you look at it in the, it is more or less equivalent to uh, addition of uh, one particular uh, proton right or you know removing O H minus right. If you think of it you know for how do I go from H G O H twice to H G O H plus now I you know either addition of H plus or which more or less translates to removing O H minus. So, that is nothing but addition of H plus and to balance it out I obviously need to write in the water right. So, that is what we have here and the next equation is now going to be equal to uh, what is it here please uh, H G H S 2. So, again how do I end up with H G H S 2. So, again the relevant uh, uh, what do we say component I am going to start with is H G O H twice H G O H twice right. So, now look at what it is that I need to uh, transform it into I have H G O H twice as my uh, building block, but I need to end up with H G H S 2. So, more or less here uh, we have uh, H G O H twice and we want to go to H G H S 2. So, it in effect means I want to replace the 2 O H minus right with uh, 2 H S minus right. So, that is what we have here. 
So, obviously, I need to remove the 2 OH minus and that is in effect going to be equal into adding 2 uh, H plus right 2 H plus minus 2 H 2 O. So, this is in effect removing the OH minus right and obviously, to be able to arrive at HS I need to add HS and HS is again my component here. So, I need to add 2 H S minus right. So, that is what I have here and with that again if you look at it. So, HGOH twice I need to remove the 2 OH minus. So, that is what I am doing here by addition of 2 H plus uh, here and I need the HS. So, that is why I am adding 2 HS minus. So, again uh, what are we trying to develop? We are just trying to develop what we say our intuition about how to uh, you know different complexes can be formed from uh, the components here right. So, again here same case I am going to try to uh, repeat that here. Uh, here again I am going to start with HG OH twice, but here uh, compared to the earlier species we have one less H right. So, here I am going to add only one less H here. So, that is going to be H plus minus 2 H2O right plus 2 HS minus right. What is the only difference between here and here as you see uh, there is one less H. So, thus obviously here I am going to uh, decrease the number of protons that I need to add compared to the previous scenario. And again same case here compared to the previous uh, what do we say uh, preceding uh, species I need to have one less H plus. So, again I am going to decrease this one H plus here. So, it is going to be equal to HgOH twice minus 2 H2O right plus 2 HS minus right. So, with that done I am able to form all my non component species right. So, uh, again uh, what did we just try to illustrate now? Uh, so, usually we choose HG2 plus or S2 minus and H plus or we would have chosen them, but because we are going to look at Vimintech later and Vimintech chooses these components, we are trying to choose the uh, what do we say uh, those components which we usually do not, but because Vimintech chooses them we are looking at them and we are trying to uh, come up with those species right, come up with the relevant species from these uh, unique components that we have not come across. So, let us write the total component equations here H plus H S minus and H G O H twice right. So, now let me list all the species they are going to be H plus O H minus uh, obviously, I should have listed H plus here and O H minus as my species right. You will always have H plus and O H minus as your species yes that is something that we missed earlier. So, H plus and O H minus and then the relevant uh, what do we say acid bases. HS minus and H2S we would have had S2 minus, but as the question indicates S2 minus is at very negligible concentrations or at negligible concentrations that is why we are not having S2 minus here and these are the 2 acid base species that we are going to consider instead of the 3 right. And then I am going to list all the 4 complexes here. So, they are going to be HGOH plus HGOH twice. H G H S twice and H G H S 2 minus and H G S 2 2 negative right. So, from the formation equations let us write them down. So, it is going to be equal to H plus here right and 0 0 how do I form O H minus I need minus 1 here 0 and 0 here how many H S minus do I need usually I guess yes, but uh, here HS minus itself is a component. So, it is going to be HS minus is 1 here and 0 and 0 and how do I form H2S? So, I need 1 H plus and 1 HS minus and this is going to be 0 and how do I form my HGOH plus right looks like I need 1 H plus I am looking at this equation and I need 1 HGOH twice and I do not need any HS minus and then HGOH twice and where is that particular ok that itself is a component right. So, that itself is a component. So, that is going to be a 0, 0 and 1 and now we need to look at HGHS2 and that is this equation. So, what do I need here? I need 2 H plus as we see here 2 H plus and how many H S minus again I need 2 H S minus right and uh, what else here and I also need 1 HGOH twice. And the second aspect would be uh, the next aspect would be H E H S 2 minus and from this equation. So, I need 1 H plus as I see here and 2 H S minus as I see here 
and 1 HgOH twice as is obvious here. And same case as here, so I do not need any H plus for forming HgHs2 minus, uh, but I need 2 Hs minus and 1 HgOH twice, right. So now I am done with writing the tableau. So, if you remember uh, what are we trying to solve for? We are trying to solve for at least the minimum set of equations that can help us uh, get at the equilibrium uh, species concentrations, right. So, obviously, what is the key here? The key is always to write down the total component balance equations, right. So, I just need to plug in or write down the total component balance equation. So, what would h total be equal to here? Let us see. Uh, let me see if I can uh, sneak that up in here because I am limited in space. So, what would h total be equal to? h total would be equal to h plus minus OH minus right minus OH minus and 1 times HS minus not really not 1 times it is H2S right 1 times H2S right plus 1 times H G O H plus plus 2 times H G H S 2 or H S twice and 1 times H G H S 2 minus right. So, how did we get this equation obviously only from this particular total component balance here right. And similarly, we are going to write down for H g uh, what is it now H s minus I guess right H s total that is going to be equal to H s minus H s minus plus H 2 s right and plus 2 times of H g H s twice plus 2 times of H g H s 2 minus again plus 2 times of H g s 2 2 minus right. Again just the coefficients and the relevant species here and lastly we have H g O H H g O H twice total that is going to be equal to as you see 0 0 0 here. So, it starts from here it is going to be equal to H g O H plus right H G O H plus plus H G 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 ok H G O H twice plus H G H S twice plus H G H S 2 minus plus H g S 2 2 minus right. So, with this we have the 3 uh, total component equations right. So, and now if we can express the different variables in terms of let us say just H plus H s minus and H g OH twice we will have 3 uh, what do we say unknowns and 3 equations right. So, right now we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 unknowns right, but right now we have only 3 equations. So, obviously, we need to come up with uh, 7 more equations and where do we get these equations from 1 from or 2 from acid base right for H 2 S and H S minus from acid base and for all these other complexes 5 complexes we can get them from our uh, complex based uh, or you know uh, equilibrium coefficients for the complexes. And in general obviously, we would like to express them as beta 1 star or beta star beta 1 star beta 2 star and so on. But here as you see you know they are a bit garbled you know they are not uh, as straightforward as with the aluminum and hydroxide uh, relevant uh, complexes that we looked at earlier. So, let us just look at one particular aspect. So, uh, what are the relevant equilibrium coefficients let us say they can be K w equal to H plus into O H minus right that is for one equation let us say I need 7 more equations. So, another would be K H 2 S that is equal to H 2 S by H plus into H s minus right. So, this is where this equation from I mean this is similar to the transformation equation uh, or the formation equation that I have here right. So, K of H 2 s is going to be equal to K of H uh, I mean activity of or concentration of H 2 s by 
let me write down the equation here this is relevant to this particular equation hs minus plus h plus is equal to h2s right so the kh2s for this particular case would be h2s by h plus and hs minus but you would not find such a uh, coefficient in your particular uh, relevant standard tables right so you need to transform these coefficients right uh, for these equations into those coefficients which you can find uh, from the standard table so obviously as you know for acids what would be the standard uh, what do we say uh, that we can look for a standard value that we can look for we can look for the acid dissociation constant right so that's going to be equal to for h2s it's going to be equal to hs minus plus h plus and we know that this ka1 is equal to the concentration of hs minus into the concentration of h plus by h2 yes right so as you see we can just express kh2s as equal to 1 by ka1 right so we would not find this particular value right again where is this particular equation from from your formation equation here right and that is the relevant equilibrium coefficient for this equation though yes but I want to express this particular uh, constant in terms of constants which would be available in my standard tables and as we can see here with minor manipulation we see that we can express it in terms of ka1 which is the acid dissociation constant for uh, h2s right and so on and so forth right so i can do that and transform that so i have the relevant equation here so let's move on let's say let's say i can also have k h g o h and that's for which equation now h g o h would be here this equation here right and how did we form that equation here we had to come up with h g o h twice uh, plus h plus minus h2o is equal to hg oh plus right so here i guess how do i go about writing this so this would now be equal to concentration of hg oh plus by hg oh twice into h plus right this is for this particular equation again this is not in the standard form so you wouldn't find it in the standard tables right so now we need to be able to transform this into uh, you know uh, you know some or products of or you know product of let's say the standard forms which we usually come across are beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 star and so on so let's see how i can express this as uh, that particular form i guess right so if you look at it in uh, you know relevant detail it's nothing but equal to beta 1 star by beta 2 star right and let us just see how that uh, comes about how do we know a complex can be formed by direct addition let us say hg oh plus so direct addition again and if it is uh, beta star what is it going to be now it is going to be direct I want to express it in terms of beta 1 star it is going to be direct but the protonated form protonated form of the ligand right so that is going to be equal to what now uh, and what do we have here and the protonated form will be equal to plus h2o right plus h2o would then be equal to and i need to release an h plus right and hopefully it's balanced now right so now we see that this is for beta 1 star and what is beta 1 star obviously it's equal to hg oh plus into h plus by hg 2 plus right yes and what would it be for hgoh twice i am now trying to form hgoh twice say uh, similarly i guess hg 2 plus plus 2 h2o right would be an equilibrium with plus 2 h plus and this would be beta 2 star right and beta 2 star is obviously equal to hgoh twice into h plus square by h g 2 plus right so obviously uh, the uh, division of beta 1 star by with uh, or by beta 2 star what do you see that that is nothing but equal to this particular set of terms so now again i can express k h g o h in terms of beta 1 star by beta 2 star right so look at this dividing beta 1 star by beta 2 star what would that lead to this particular set of variables 
right? So I now have KHGOH. So similarly, I can calculate the relevant, uh, what do we say, coefficients in terms of standard coefficients, right? And so I can come up with seven more, uh, what do we say, equations. So if you remember earlier, we had 10 unknowns and now we had three component balance equations and with the relevant coefficients and uh, equilibrium coefficients or acid dissociation constants, I can come up with seven more equations. So now I can express all the three, uh, all the equations in terms of just, what is it now, H plus, HS minus and the other uh, component which is I believe HGOH twice, right. So once I do that, I can solve for the relevant system and with that we are done here, let us say, right. But now we will move on to the last example and that is going to be the case, we are, we are going to look at application in VMintech, right. So let us see where I have the example here. So here we are going to look at constructing a log C pH graph, right. So if you remember in acid base uh, reactions, we came across this that people look at log C pH graphs to understand or have a snapshot or take a holistic view of your particular system. So there are different ways, obviously you can solve that by hand as we tried to set up earlier, right. So let us say for example, construct a log CPH diagram for mercury sulphide solution when total HGOH twice is so and total HS is this value, let us say, or range of pH 4 to pH 10, right. So you can solve this by hand based on what we just did earlier, but obviously for a multiple range of H plus, right, pH 4 to pH 10, it is going to be remarkably time consuming, right. So you have better ways, so what is the, uh, obviously the better way, you can just plug in the relevant what do we say constants, not constants, pardon me, the components into VMintech. And how do you get the pH graph though? You know that multi-sweep allows you to change one parameter and in this case we are going to change pH. So rather than doing it by hand, right, so by hand we need to do what it is that we did earlier, right, at each H plus concentration or at each pH we need to solve for it and then uh, what do we say develop the uh, graph, right, with the log C here and pH here. So, but as we just looked at it, that takes remarkable time. So, what are we going to do? We are going to look at using Vimintech, right, and use the multi-sweep problem, right, multi-sweep option here, right. So, let us see where we are up to. So, here already the question says we have total HGOH twice as 10 power minus 5 molar and HS as 10, 2 into 10 power minus 5 molar. So, let us switch to uh, Vimintech here. So, the components are HS minus, right? Where is HS minus here? HS minus, right? And what is the concentration of that? HS minus is 2 into 10 power minus 5. So we need to write that here. So molal and here it is going to be 2 E minus 5. So the Vimintech will take that as 2 into 10 power minus 5. So add that to the list and then I believe it is HGOH twice, right, HGOH twice and what is the concentration here? Total component for HGOH twice was uh, or is 1 into 10 power minus 5. So 1 into 10 power minus 5. So I am going to delete this here, let us see. So this Vimintech takes capital E minus 5 as uh, 10 to the power of minus 5 as does XL2 I guess, right. So add to list, let me just look at that. So I have HS minus total component as 2 into 10 power minus 5 and HGOH twice as 10 power minus 5. So back to main menu, right? And now obviously multi sweep problem. And here uh, I'm going to sweep with sweep where one parameter is varied. So because the question, what does the question ask for? If you remember that, it wants us to get the relevant information for uh, pH 4 to pH 10, right? So Thursday, I'm going to vary the pH and ask Vimintech to do the job for me. So uh, number of problems, obviously, we are going to look at that. So increment value would be, let's say, uh, start value would be four. Increment value would be, let's say, 0.1. So 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, so on until uh, pH 10. So 4 to 10 would be six, right? Six times into 10 would be 60. And one addition, because we need to start with four, it's going to be total set of 61 problems, right. So the number of increments between 4 and uh, uh, pH 4 and pH 10 inclusive of both the two values, right. So that is what uh, with that we can end up with 61 because we are going from 4, 4.1, 4.2 so on until 9.9 uh, .9 and 10, right. So let us uh, go with that. 
and obviously what uh, what am I looking for log c and p h. So, let me add the relevant uh, species here. So, we already have p h. So, I am going to look at h s minus let us say log concentration because it is log c p h add and what else h g o h twice add and h g uh, what is it now h g o h twice and h g o h plus I am not going to add all the species I am going to add those species which we know from our previous question that are going to be predominant. So, they are going to be let us say h g h h s 2 right and what else please uh, these are not going to be predominant. So, only the h s h s 2 we have this and s 2 minus. So, 1 2 3 4 5 ok and what else are we missing h 2 s and anything else that we are missing out here ok. So, that seems fine. So, I am going to save and back and I am going to ask uh, so view at least we looked at that run min tech let us say. So, let us say I am going to so here there is some issue here what is the issue there. So, computations have resulted in an estimate of 0 for activity of uh, some component. So, anyway the system that you specified is uh, remarkably complex. So, that is why you know we may take itself had trouble uh, arriving at the solution right. So, for that you need to provide some assistance to women take as in you need to have a pro initial guess of some of the uh, species. So, let us look at how we can uh, help women take with that. So, I am going to go here and when I do view edit list. So, can the activity be guessed for these two species I mean these are components, but as you see these are also species. So, if I uncheck this mark what does this mean? no tick in this box means an activity guess of 10 power minus 16 molar right. So, what this means is if I uncheck this box uh, these components which are also present as species the v min tech will uh, start with an initial guess of 10 power minus 16 molar concentration. So, that will be the basis for it to be able to solve for the solution right. So, it will arrive at the solution, but you are providing some assistance to it and let us say obviously how so that is going to be the case for pH 4 for obviously pH 4.5 what is women take going to do it is going to use the results from pH 4 to be able to solve for 4.5 and again 4.2 will be results will be based on 4.1 and so on. But if you give a huge gap between uh, what do we say incremental pH values as in you initially calculated pH 4 and want the system to calculate pH 5 then the calculations will be off. So, that is one of the reasons why we chose an increment of 0.1 as in 4.1 4.2 and so on rather than 4, 5, 6 and so on. So, again we are asking v min tech to go up with a guess initially. So, it is going to be that case so run min tech. So, we just have the uh, results here uh, for different uh, iterations. So, 1 to 61 let us say. So, I will randomly choose 50. So, that is for 8.9 pH again the relevant results right. Uh, so, obviously, I want to look at the holistic picture. So, I am going to say look at selected sweep results right. So, the selected sweep results are out here. So, from pH 4 at 4.1, 4.2 so on up to 10 and the relevant uh, concentrations of the species that we requested. So, we only ask for a few species because we know that the others are not going to be at uh, uh, what we say comparable concentrations. So, they were h s minus h g o h and blah blah. So, this is from the question 1 if people can uh, remember that. So, now I am going to look at uh, the graph right. So, I am going to print that to excel right and then plot it which I have just done. So, here uh, we are now going to look at log c p h graph and here again p h and h s minus h g o h twice and blah blah or the, all the other species pardon me. And here we now have the log c pH graph. So, log c are the cons logarithmic concentration or co uh, logarithm of the concentration on the y axis and pH on the x axis from 4 to 10. So, let us just try to understand what it is that the system is trying to tell us right. So, obviously, log c pH graphs will uh, uh, allow us to take a holistic view of the uh, what we say uh, system here. So, let us just try to identify which species are in general uh, at relatively high concentrations and which species are at uh, remarkably low concentrations or at negligible concentrations. So, here as you see we have two species that are predominant what are they? They are h s minus and h 2 s they correspond to these two particular graphs here right over the range of 4 to 10 yes. So, obviously, as we keep increasing the pH we know that the proteinoid form of the acid is going to decrease in concentration that is why you see h 2 s decreasing right 
and obviously HS minus concentration will increase. So, maybe the pKa is around 7 point uh, or 1 or something like that. And then the next major aspect that we need to look at is there are different complexes. I think we considered 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Two complexes are between mercury and hydrox OH minus and the other three complexes are between mercury and uh, sulphide, right. So, as you can look at this particular graph, so a bunch of three are here and a bunch of three are somewhere out here now. Keep in mind that this is a logarithmic scale. So, the order of magnitude difference is almost 15 and 40, right. So, that is 25 difference if I am not wrong, yes that is 25. So, 25 order of magnitude, right or 10 power 25 times smaller here. So, these two complexes which are relevant to HGOH twice and HGOH plus, right are 10 to the power of 25 times uh, lesser than these three complexes which are between mercury and sulphide. So, again the uh, take home message here is that, so in which forms will mercury be uh, predominantly present in? It will be present in, what is it now, uh, complexes as Hg and sulphide, right. And though they will be present or mercury will also form complexes with uh, OH minus, the mercury hydroxide complexes are at very low concentrations, right. So, that is what we are trying to uh, look at it here and so thus obviously uh, gives you an idea about what is happening in the system. So, I believe I should also have uh, asked the system to calculate uh, Hg2 plus concentration or plot it here. So, let us go back and uh, go back and ask Vimited to do that so that we can know, right. Back to input menu uh, and where is this multi sweep problem. I am also going to ask for the free metal concentration to be plotted which is something I should have done earlier. So, I'll add that and save and back and I am going to uh, run Mintech, right and now I am going to go to selector sweep results and print to excel. I am I just want to look at what is the case when I consider the mercury concentration too to know what is the uh, free metal concentration I guess, right. Anyway, the graph is not going to be as clear as earlier, but let us uh, see if we can be done with that. So, okay, so again the it is from 4 to 10 and where is the mercury concentration out here though? Anyway, the mercury concentration is so low as compared to the other complexes that you know the graph is not capturing it, makes sense hopefully, right. So, if let us just look at the numbers now, here let us say at pH 4 it is uh, Hg 2 plus is already at minus 38, right and while the others are at minus 7, minus 37 and so on and maybe that is the reason why the graph is not uh, plotting that Hg, okay I do have Hg 2 plus right and as you see it is remarkably low concentration, right. So, if I look at the uh, x axis from pH 4 to pH 10, uh, you see that the free metal concentration is remarkably low, right. So, what do we understand here? First, the free metal concentration uh, mercury is negligible, right and that HgOH com complexes are formed, but not at very high or significant concentrations, but mercury would in general be present as or in which forms now? the mercury and sulphide complexes and that is what you understand from this particular uh, graph here, right. So, the mercury and the mercury hydroxide complexes are at very low concentrations, uh, but the only relevant uh, what do we say forms of mercury that are at relatively high concentrations are the mercury sulphide concentrations, right. And this is one way I guess where you can look at the toxicity or affect the toxicity of mercury uh, or the free metal of mercury, let us say uh, free metal mercury toxicity I guess. For example, if we or as we know that mercury is toxic, right, Hg2 plus, but by adding Hs minus let us say or you know the sulphide as a ligand, you can reduce the toxicity. Why? As you see here, the free metal concentration is remarkably low. Again, here we are assuming that the Hg and sulphide complexes are not toxic, which I guess is a decent assumption to make, right. Anyway, so with that, we will be done with the aqueous complex based uh, aspects. For the next session, we are going to move on to the next major aspect, right? It is going to be precipitation and dissolution. So, with that, I am done for today and thank you.